Hey guys, John DeBruin here at Hutch BMX, and today you are at the Hutch factory in Appleton, Wisconsin. And we're standing at the CNC machine here making aerospeed arms. What we're doing is we're taking the aerospeed arm shape and we're boring in the holes for the pedal boss and the spindle boss. I'm going to get the CNC fired up here and we're going to talk a little bit more about aerospeeds. Now what many people might not know is that Hutch BMX is a fully equipped modern CNC and fab shop here in Appleton, Wisconsin. We make a lot of the BMX parts right here in the factory using uh, made in USA, ma using equipment that is also made in USA. The machine that we're standing at is a Haas VF4 Super Speed, made in Oxnard, California. It is the uh, fastest and most advanced CNC milling machine made in the United States and Haas is one of the largest machine tool manufacturers in the entire world. The vise that's holding this setup is Kurt, made in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And even the coolant that we're spraying uh, is also made in USA, uh, down in Ohio. Now what we're making here is the 170 millimeter length aerospeed arms specific for the Trickstar. And a lot of people are asking why are you making tricks or aerospeeds specific to the Trickstar? Well the Trickstar has a mid bottom bracket and by nature a mid bottom bracket is an inboard bottom bracket. So to facilitate crank arms to fit on there nicely what we need to do is have a crank arm with a little bit larger angle away from the frame so that the pedal boss when it swings around doesn't hit the chain stay. So the 170 millimeter length arms specific for the Trickstar are for that purpose to be able to clear the stays. Conversely, we also have the 175 and 180 millimeter aero speeds and those are meant for the race frames such as the Pro Racer and the XL24. Those frames we recommend going with the outboard style Euro bottom bracket that those frames have. And that outboard bottom bracket actually moves the crank arms further out automatically. So we don't need to have that greater angle on the crank arms to be able to clear the stays. We actually want a shallower angle on them. Now one thing that's cool about aerospeeds is that they are not only a good looking crank but they're also very strong. Let's come over here and talk about that a little bit. What we have is again on the far left the shape of the aerospeed crank arm which is a fully formed die stamp 4130 chromoly steel six sided double tapered design and as you can see those holes bored in there they are precisely the diameter of the pedal and spindle boss that will get inserted in there so the welds on all sides of these are precise there's no fabbing the shape the formed shape of the aero speeds is all one piece of metal wrapping all the way around this. This is not fabricated at all. That's all formed in the die stamp process. Conversely, conversely, what we have here with the swag tube style, which is the most popular style of crank arm for the past 20 plus years, and even going back further to 30 years with the box style cranks, is they are made by taking two tabs on either side that wrap around that spindle boss and if you've ever seen one of these crank, uh, cranks break, it's usually on one side the tab's breaking off because essentially all you have is one tab holding the entire rider's weight coming down when he's coming off of a massive jump. So it's not a very strong design, but it, they are fast and cheap and easy to make. Aerospeeds have a lot more work involved in them, but they're also a lot stronger crank. Now strength is great, but we also wouldn't want that to be at a compromise of weight. We're going to show that the aerospeeds here are actually even lighter than the swag tube cranks arm, crank arms as well. I'm going to turn on my gram scale here on the right. We're going to take a finished 180 millimeter chrome plated aerospeed arm. We're at 297 grams. I'm going to take a finished 180 millimeter no sprocket boss left side drive, swag tube style, no chrome plating, we're at 310 grams. So the aero speeds are not only stronger, they're also lighter. Back over in the CNC and we're boring some more holes here, we're watching that. One reason why we're doing 170 millimeter length on the Trickstar as well, is because the Trickstar, whether it be the flatland version or the street version, guys typically today, 
don't really need the whole 175 or 180 millimeter length. They're not looking for the torque or horsepower that a race application like the Pro Racer or the XL24 would be used in. And in fact, a lot of the Flatland guys, they want a shorter crank length, even in the 165 to 160 millimeter length. That's pretty short, and we can't really do that with, with the Aerospeed uh, formed arms that we have them, but we can do 170. It's a really, really good in-between middle road that'll hit uh, the new school younger people and also the old school guys that aren't familiar with going down to that short of a crank arm. But again, in freestyle, you don't really need the torque or the horsepower. Uh, maybe a little bit in the street side, but certainly not on the flatland side. So that's the reason that we're doing a shorter crank arm length specifically for the Trickstar Aerospeed. Now keep in mind that with both styles, whether it be the race or the freestyle version of Aerospeeds, this is all spline drive technology. I know a lot of old school guys might not be familiar with spline drive yet, but it is really a trick setup and you're gonna love it once you get to understand it. It basically is just taking away the sprocket boss because we don't need that weight there anymore, and it's shifting the drive mechanism to a steel insert that's on the sprocket. We're gonna have spline drive for the freestyle Aerospeeds here in the 170 link, and also in the race side for the 175 and the 180s. We are coming out with the uh, five-point spider in spline drive and also the one-piece sprockets for the freestyle side. Again, all spline drive. All of this stuff is compatible with the general new technology of spline drive. So in other words, you could use somebody else's sprocket with aero speeds. You could use aero speeds uh, you know, with hutch aero speeds and the sprockets. Um, you can mix and match whatever you want to do. It's all standard stuff. Other thing to keep in mind with uh, all this hutch stuff that we're doing today is we're basically taking the design elements that we all know and love, but we're updating everything today. I always hate the street rod comparison too, but it really is legit. If you want to look at a new Mustang with all the horsepower and handling that they have and compare that to an old 60s Mustang, they basically have the same styling, but everything is just so much more improved. If you've ever driven in a new Mustang or Challenger or Camaro, uh, it's hard to almost go back to some of those old ones. Um, they're, they're really updated and, and, and we're doing this so that guys can get out and, and ride something that they know and love but ride it at a performance level that's at today. And that's really the whole point of it. Another thing to, to mention too is if, if any of you guys don't understand the spline drive yet or, or don't get the, the methodology behind chain line or, or where to hold your chain line and what parts to use to do that, I'm always available. Either send me an email or just give us a call and I'm happy to explain it. That stuff is kind of harder to explain uh, in email, just, just give me a call. Um, but it is something that you know we're putting a lot of thought into with this product. Uh, I know that you're gonna like it once you figure it out and, and get it set up on your new Trick Start or your Pro Racer or your XL24. on the last operation right here. It's boring the one inch diameter hole for the spindle boss. One last thing I'll mention too is some guys ask, well, you're making a lot of stuff in USA. How come you don't make everything in USA? That's a good question too. Reality is, is all of this stuff does take an awful lot of time. You can pick and choose your battles on what you do best. We're really proud of the aero speeds. Again, 100% made right here. A lot of effort, a lot of work goes into them. We do believe it's stronger and lighter than any other chromoly crank arm that's out there. Um, but there are only so many hours in the day. So you gotta pick and choose what you do best. Uh, we would like to make frames uh, in-house here at some point. Maybe we'll get to that point, but regardless, it's still a well-engineered frame. A lot of thought, a lot of engineering goes into it. Uh, a lot more than what most people would, uh, would think. Virtually all of the component parts that you see on the HutchBMX.com website are all made in USA though. Um, again, that's where you wanna go to buy this. HutchBMX.com calculates shipping anywhere in the world will ship directly to you. If you're outside of the United States, Visa and MasterCard accepted. If you're in the US, we also accept PayPal.
So thanks for stopping by. Hope you appreciate the video. We'll do some more as we're doing other things. We also weld these up right here um, at the Hutch Factory too. We'll do another video here shortly that uh, shows the, the bosses being put in. Thanks for watching.